I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. In today's video, I've been talking about my uh, half of the year wrap up for the first half of 2024. We are already in the month of July, in the middle of the month of July. So I think it is time to talk about, about the best and also about one, well, uh, the worst book that I have read in the year 2024 so far. But first, I will start by talking about uh, the second quarter of this year. That means uh, what I read from the month of April until the end of the month uh, of June and which one were the best one. I will start from that first. But first, before we begin, statistic. So from the month of April until the month of June, I managed to read uh, 14 books. That's 30 novels and also one novella, roughly about 6,400 pages long, plus 18 volumes of manga. That's for the Dan the Dan series by Yukinobu Tatsu in the month of June. So overall, once again, I think overall the quality of the books that I read, despite the lack of five stars, I did manage to get one five stars in the month of April, but despite the big a lack of five stars uh, this year. So far, I still had overall quite a good uh, reading month. And in today's video for the second quarter of uh, the year 2024, out of the five books that I'm going to mention, three of them are self-published and two of them are traditionally published. And after I talk about my second quarter of this year, I will start overall by mentioning the number one worst and the number one best book that I read within this year so far. So yeah, let's begin. Let's start from ranking number five. This is for The Bonds of Chaos by Zach Argal. This is the third book and the conclusion to the Threadlight trilogy, a series that has often been advertised and marketed to readers who love reading uh, Mistborn, Lightbringers, and yeah, basically those two. And I can definitely vouch uh, for that statement. I think it is a great uh, endorsement. And if you really do enjoy reading Mistborn, uh, the magic system in Mistborn and also the Lightbringer, plus Brandon Sanderson's style of writing, I think you should try reading uh, Threadlight Trilogy. It's, there is no better way to uh, call or encapsulate the Threadlight Trilogy as a Mistborn Trilogy, but also a light version, or as some readers would call it, a Sanderson light epic fantasy. And I think that is so precise. I think Bonds of Chaos is the best of the entire trilogy. The ending and the final convergence, it was satisfying. One character, especially Alvarax, I did not expect that he would become my favorite character of the entire trilogy, but I felt he was the one that was so well done. Uh, the development was so well done. And that's not all, really. The theme of family, the theme of doing everything uh, we can for the sake of our loved ones and family, I think it was handled really well. I did wanted the series to be longer than a trilogy or at least the word count to be bigger, I think, because there's just so much potential. Zach Argal is a great storyteller and I think in his next series, he really should consider writing a bigger epic fantasy series. He can uh, do it. But yeah, at the number five spot, it is The Bonds of Chaos. And then at the number four spot, I'm going to choose another conclusion to a trilogy and it is Return to Eden by Philip Chase. This is the third and the final book in the Eden trilogy, the biggest book of the entire trilogy and easily my favorite. The decision to include a new POV character in this book, it was brilliant and doing that definitely enhanced my overall experience of the return to Eden. There's so much more uh, to say about the return to uh, Eden. I have posted a full spoiler review of this book on my Goodreads and also on my blog. Um, novel notions, but I'm really blessed to have read uh, The Way of Eden, The Prophet of Eden. That, that one is my least favorite, but it's still a good one. And of course, The Return uh, to Eden. There is a bit of Lord of the Rings here. You can definitely tell that Beowulf and Lord of the Rings and also Malazan are all big inspirations to Philip Chase as a storyteller and as a writer. His writing is beautiful and also there were some things here that were surprisingly more brutal than I expected, but at the same time, I needed to read that. I think they definitely escalated the stakes of the return to Edan or Eden. <laughs> Again, I, I always have difficulty in saying the name Edan here because Edan in Indonesia literally means uh, insane. So <laughs> the return to insanity. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I really enjoyed uh, reading this one. This is uh, one of the best of Harvest Fantasy books that I read 
uh, this year. And I have no doubt there will be more books in the world of AR Menlon, and I'm looking forward to that. I think Philip Chess has mentioned there will be a standalone sequel to The Return to Edan, and yeah, I will be reading that uh, for sure. And after that, uh, the next book I'm going to mention at the number three spot, this is for Deathless by Rob J. Hayes. This is pretty much tied uh, for the number two spot as well for me. I cannot seem to decide uh, which one I like more between uh, Deathless and the next one I'm going to mention. But for now, I will just talk about Deathless. This book is short. It is only about 70,000 words long. And well, it is just uh, amazing. It is political epic fantasy at its best, in my opinion. It did take me some time to get used to the many names and also the many characters in the short book. So you just have to make do and swim with the currents here. But believe me, the second half, it was absolutely amazing. The intensity and also how everything came together, how the planning and everything came together in the second half. I think if you love the political uh, nature of Elden Ring, uh, the, fam the family political nature of Elden Ring and also the conflict in A Song of Ice and Fire, the family conflict, I think there's a really good chance you will really like Deathless. I haven't read uh, Harold yet. Some readers have told me that by reading Harold, you will understandably spoil the events of Deathless. You will understand, you will know what's going to happen. And for me, reading the demon first and then Deathless, a demon takes place about uh, 2000 years before the events of Deathless. By doing that, I actually didn't know what was going to happen. And I think it increased uh, the stakes and also the tension uh, for me. But now I'm super excited to be reading Harold, uh, the main book in the God Eater saga, uh, in the God Eater saga, and it is out now. But well done to Rob J. Hayes, not only demon, uh, was in my favorite book of the year, now Deathless as well. And I think at this rate, Harold will be uh, included in my list of favorite books uh, as well. And then we are, we are at the number two spot, the runner-up spot. It will go to The Witchwood Crown by Tad Williams, the first book in the Last King of Boston art uh, series, the sequel uh, to Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn trilogy. One of my top favorite trilogy of all time now. I read Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn trilogy last year, and I'm, I was so amazed with everything about that trilogy, the writing, uh, the plotting, even the pacing, and all, but overall, the world building and also the immersion, it, it is difficult to find something as good as Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn. And I got what I wanted again in The Witch with Crown, the first book in The Last King of Boston Art. And that's quite a surprise because this book is actually written 30 years. Yeah, Ted Williams wrote this 30 years after the end of the Green Angel Tower. And somehow the continuation, it just felt so seamless, so natural. It's just so organic, like it is meant to be that way. Like it has always been designed that Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn should have this sequel. And yeah, the new characters, the returning characters, I love and hate them in a good way at the same time because the, uh, the annoying and infuriating characters such as Morgan, he is intentionally designed uh, that way. But yeah, everything about it, the writing is once again Ted Williams at his best. It's so beautiful, meticulous. I love reading Ted Williams' writing and I will be reading Empire of Grass uh, really soon. Based on the cliffhanger ending of The Witchwood Crown, I expect The Empire of Grass to be a superior uh, installment compared to The Witchwood Crown. And finally, at the number one spot, this is the best book that I read in the second quarter of this year. And of course, uh, this is also the second book to receive a 5 out of 5 stars rating from me this year. And it is This Quiet Gods by Christopher Rocchio, the sixth and the penultimate installment in the Sun Eater series. I have talked about the Sun Eater uh, so many times the past 10 months or 9 months. But ever since I read Empire of Silence in uh, September, I haven't really stopped talking about the Sun Eater. I post, I posted a full spoiler review for each book in the Sun Eater series. I have never done that for any book on my YouTube channel, but I feel I have to do that because I love this series. I want this series to receive more spotlight, and I'm really happy to see more and more Sun Eater fans uh, growing and growing day by day. The fandom is growing bigger and bigger day by day, and I think there is no sign of it stopping soon. But the Discord Gods as a pan ultimate installment, it was everything that I wanted. It increased the insanity 
of the series of the universe and there were some things that happened here that I totally did not predict even though I knew where the destination was going uh, with the Sanita series ever since Empire of Silence but still the stuff that happened in uh, this quiet gods they were absolutely brilliant Hadrian Marlowe he has come such a long long way ever since Empire of Silence we are talking about hundreds and hundreds of years here that's the way time goes in uh, the Sun Eater series and now we have only one book left yeah that's uh, Shadows Upon Time the seventh and the final book in the Sun Eaters which I think will be released in the year 2025 next year but for now this is the best book that I read in the second quarter of the year 2024 so what's the worst book that I have read this year it is actually a murder mystery it is Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman I did not expect this would become my least favorite book because I was reading this as a palate cleanser and I guess it kind of worked uh, that way but at the same time I did not enjoy my reading experience of it at all the number of chapters that went beyond 100 chapters even though the book is really short only about 200 pages long it was overkill in my opinion we keep uh, constantly changing POV character uh, non-stop and then and it was really hard uh, for me to feel immersed in the characters in the characters POV because we are constantly changing non-stop but I think the biggest downfall of Thursday Murder Club for me it was the wrong expectation I had going into this book I had no idea why I did not thought that this would be a cozy mystery <laughs> a cozy murder mystery that's really the book I think and if I'm not mistaken some people have told me that this is the entire series so that's what I did not expect I went into Thursday Murder Club expecting a lot of intensity or maybe something kind of like in the middle let's say like Knives Out uh, the movie Knives Out I think it contained fun entertainment and also tension I wanted something like that from Thursday Murder Club and I did not get that but at the same time I do think that this book or maybe this series because I still plan to continue uh, maybe this series would work much better as a TV show adaptation and I certainly plan uh, to watch that so what's the best book that I read this year so far well it is not this quiet guts it is the first book that I read that I started in the year 2024 it is Kingdoms of Death by Christopher Rocchio the fourth book in the Sun Eater series I consider this one to be up there with Demon in White as the best installment in the Sun Eater series if Demon in White is Hadrian Marlowe and the glory of the Red Company then this one depicts the darkness of Hadrian Marlowe's life. I love everything about Kingdoms of Death. It's, it's been so long since I felt and encountered a book that made me read nonstop way into the morning. There was one point in Kingdoms of Death where I probably should have stopped before reading that chapter. But if you have read this book, if you know, you know, once I reach that part, well, I end up reading nonstop up to 5 a.m. Yeah, the Red Company Discord knows about this, but I really couldn't stop. It was that good. The intensity is at maximum level. And this is the very rare book that reminded me of the first time I'm reading Berserk by Kentaro uh, Mura. It is just that good. It is amazing. I love everything about Kingdoms of Death. And I do wish, despite the darkness that happened uh, in this book, I do wish more books would be as brave and as insane as kingdoms of death i think that would definitely elevate my overall reading experience so yeah this is the best book that i read within this year so far and let's see whether this will triumph throughout the entire year sometimes that could happen but yeah that's really my wrap up for the first half of the year 2024 do let me know what you think about all the books that i read uh, within this year so far oh, sorry about the best books that i chose uh, for the first half of this year and let me know uh, which one which books is your favorite for the first half of 2024 and yeah i think that's pretty much it for me today as always thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support bye bye lastly i want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me 